This is going to be exciting. We're continuing and finishing and landing our series, Joy to the World, at a perfect time with some of the most amazing people I know on planet Earth. Our good friends, Pam, and our good friends, Stephanie Martinez, Eloy Martinez, worship leaders, speakers extraordinaire. This is going to be so good, you guys. And of course, we always have the Holy Spirit with us when we're turning to God's Word. So let's right now invite the Holy Spirit and let's get down to business. Precious Holy Spirit, help us. We welcome you. Lord, unfold the Word of God into our hearts, into our lives, our minds. And Father God, as we step into a new frontier, a new year, God, we declare that our lives will never be the same, but because we're walking with the light, not just with us, but in our hearts. Father God, going before us, you go before us, you come up behind us. You are our covering, our strong shield, our great reward, all in the precious name of Jesus. Jesus, amen. You guys, yeah. thank you for doing this what with us. What a pleasure. Yeah, Glad to be us. with you. Oh, we it's love it. Honor. I got my beautiful wife Pam with me. This is going to be exciting, talking about joy to the world. So in review, because I want to get down to, you guys got some beautiful things to share, all three of you. But, you know, we had in review, and I know that you guys have been taking notes. I'm sure you have been taking notes. We learned that there's no substitute for the authentic good news ingredients of joy, true joy. Here's what we've learned so far when we've talked about joy to the world in this season. First of all, the authentic good news, God kind of good news joy, has nothing to do with Santa Claus. Which is kind of good because I think you're all tired of hearing Santa Claus songs, right? There's this song that we all hear at Christmas time. I think it's called Santa Baby, and the lyrics go like this Santa Honey, a 54 convertible two, light blue. I'll wait up for you, dear Santa baby. You know, and the reality is we are so easily distracted from the real message of joy for the whole year because joy is supposed to be a 365 thing, not just a December 25 thing. There's nothing wrong with material things and beautiful gifts, but they can never give us true joy. That's the first thing we learn. Secondly, we're called to live a life of rejoicing. That means activating joy in our lives and being a distributor of it, a carrier of joy. You know, to me, I think that's so good, Pam, that we've been entrusted not just with the message, the good news, but to carry Jesus' joy for ourselves, but for others, for our families, for our friends, for those who are lost in a hurting world. You know, before the very first Christmas ever occurred in the world, there was a, it was hungry, it was cold, it was waiting for the true light. That light was Jesus, the only begotten Son of God, and the extraordinary gift He brought was His joy, all packaged up in His good news. Not only do we get His joy, but we also get to carry His joy. So, Pam, you're such an expert at reading Luke 2. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to read verses 9 through 11. And the angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord flashed and shone around them and among them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. Behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For in this day in the city of David, there is born to you a Savior, the Messiah Christ the Lord. You guys, I always have to laugh when I read that. Every time I read it, I'm always thinking, in the glory of, the, of God shone, the angels showed up, and light, and, and the shepherds, and I always want to read, and the shepherds were ecstatic with joy, and they were like, this is awesome. But no, they were terrified. <laughs> they were terrified, yeah. And, and I think we need, to re, like, we need to come to grips with this. God wants to bring good news into our life. For this new year, God wants to bring extraordinary, amazing good news. And the truth is, it's going to kind of shock and scare the carnal side of you. The, the unbelieving, fearful side of you will be kind of like, uh, that, that's a little bit too good. That's a little too sweet. You know, I want to back up from that. And the truth is we need God's good news and we need to be like what the angel said, not be afraid. Look, because this is not a seasonal gift. Pam and I, we have dear friends in Grand Rapids that own tree, a Christmas tree farm, and that's seasonal. You know, and even this year, they ran out of Christmas yeah. trees, if you can believe it's it. It's like my family. It's amazing, but that's seasonal, but joy, joy from God, from Jesus, through Jesus, is a 365, 24 hour a day commodity. It is joy, it's an energy, it's a power, it's a strength that never is failing. Yes, 
It happened once upon a time for a moment we call Christmas, but it is an all year long gift, an all lifelong gift. Yes, you can have your cake and eat it too. Contrary to culture that says you can't, you can have your cake and eat it too. So also we downloaded from God's word this aspect of joy that the wise men in Matthew 2 saw this particular star. And Pam, I liked how you put it. They saw a compass. It was a compass, a guiding light for them to get to the Savior. Pam, if you don't mind reading us Matthew 2, verse 10. And they saw the star, and when they saw it, they were thrilled with ecstatic joy. Hey, the wise men called the star his star, Jesus' star, the King of the Jews, right? The wise men understood something that we all need to learn. We all need a guiding light to take us forward, to give us hope, to finally have that great joy, that ecstatic joy. Hey, let me put it this way. No compass, no joy. You know, there was a TV show that where there was, they called soup it Nazi, yeah. Soup Nazi. <laughs> and it was like, soup for you. right, at a certain point, he was kind of just discriminating whoever he just didn't like. It was like, you, Eloy, no soup for you. <laughs> well, here's the truth. Jesus comes along. We come to him. We say, please, sir, can I have some more soup? And he goes, joy for you, everybody. Joy for everyone, right? That's the wonderful thing about Jesus. It's for whosoever will. It doesn't matter if you're rich, you're poor, you're black, you're white, if you're female, male. It doesn't matter who, young, old. It doesn't matter if you're traditional, if you're contemporary. Jesus has got joy for That's us. Right. It doesn't matter where we came from. It doesn't matter how broken our lives are, how sinful our lives have been, how many mistakes I've made, how many times I've fallen and banged my face on the ground. It doesn't matter. Jesus says, whosoever, you want joy? Stephen, you want joy? I got joy for you. You see, we've confused pleasure with joy. People chase pleasure and they get no joy. People eat the treats and then they feel buyer's remorse because no matter how tasty it is, it's not fulfilling, right? Throughout the Christmas holidays, people eat more, they drink more, they indulge more. And yet hospitals and social workers, my mom was a nurse. Uh, she will tell you, I mean, many times I heard even as a boy growing up how many suicide cases were at the hospital. It would just, it would floor, it would exponentially increase at Christmas time the suicide attempts. Why? Because people are desperate. They're depressed. They're in despair looking for joy. And it's not just among the disadvantaged. Some studies show that more suicide attempts are in wealthier neighborhoods, if you can believe. Why? Because I think people realize this stuff is not doing it for me. There's nothing else to go to. I've got all the stuff and all the good feelings, all the pleasures, and I still don't have joy. Stuff and material possessions and status is not joy. So, Stephanie, I, I want to get to you because, you know, we're realizing here that pleasure is not, it does not equal joy. And you've got a great story. Um, I, I love hearing, you know... The, the Bible says that God is unwilling to do without a cheerful giver. And you've got a great story about joy in the giving. In the giving. And to kick that off, let's read 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Let each one give thoughtfully and with purpose, just as he has decided in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver and delights in the one whose heart is in his gift. Oh, I like that. I love I like that. that. I love that. Cause you know, you, you think like, well, it's the holiday season. I'll throw a little bit in the Salvation Army can, right? <laughs> As we're going in the, the store or whatever. But God wants our heart attached to our gifts yeah. or else it's not really a, th a thoughtful gift, is it? And I remember besides, um, you know, giving tithe and offering, which we always do, there was a season in my life where the Lord challenged me and kind of gave me an assignment. I think the Holy Spirit's a teacher, so he gives homework. Yeah. So he gave me homework. That's good. And one of my homework assignments financially was to each month set aside a certain amount of money, and it was called my bless money. And every month I would ask him, who do you want me to give this to? What organization needs this, this gift? And I would do, always do it anonymously. So I would just, it was just kind of an exercise in listening and obedience. So 
I, I asked um, this one month where this money should go to. And he told me, he showed me a person who was on the worship team with me at the time. So I, I planned to give that gift, but he also gave me um, a message that he wanted to go with it, which was odd, but he gave me specific instructions that I was supposed to write, type out a certain uh, one-line message on this piece of paper, and I tucked the, mon the money inside the paper. I print, I um, typed out her address, because I didn't even want her to recognize my handwriting, sent it off, and I just did that. I'm like, well, that was weird. You know, sometimes he asks you to do some unconventional things. So a couple weeks later, it was a Wednesday night at church, and we were sitting there, and um, this person happened to be leading worship uh, with me on the team that night. And there was an opportunity for people to share God stories, just some things that God had been doing in their lives. And this girl stands up. And she said, a couple weeks ago, I was going through a really hard time. I was discouraged. I had been praying about a situation. And I, I, I said the words, do you even hear me when I call? And she said, my heart was so, um, so discouraged and, and questioning God. She was like, that afternoon, I went to my mailbox and I opened this letter and in it was a money gift and there was one line typed on the paper, and it said, just to let you know, I hear you when you call. Wow. He had me type that message before she had even said that, so that, because he knew that this girl on this day would need not just money, but she would need a message that communicated the fact that he loved her, that she was on his radar, that he was well aware of where she was at and what she was asking for and praying for, and that she indeed hear, she, he did hear her when she called. And that's the beauty of giving. And it's not just when our hearts are in, it's when God was in it. And I'm telling you, I was sitting right next to her as she's sharing this story. And I was overwhelmed inside. I'm like, don't, just be cool, be cool. Because I didn't want her to know that I was a part of that. But inside my heart was jumping and screaming up and down, not about what I did, but about the fact that God gave her a gift and I got to be a part of it. He actually let me partner with him in giving to send not just money, because giving is far more than money. Giving is a message of God. Yeah. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah. And it was such an incredible moment because this girl got to receive joy, but my joy was exploding on the inside. And I'm, I'm blinking very quickly to blink tears away so that she doesn't see that I'm crying or there's no hint of what was going on there. But here was God let me partner with him yeah. in giving and bringing incredible joy to another one of his kids. Oh, Stephanie, that's so beautiful. I feel like right now there's, there's two different types of people listening. There's somebody right now that does not feel they've been believing that same lie that God doesn't hear their heart mm -hmm. and doesn't, God doesn't notice them. And then there's somebody else that's really feeling an instruction from your example that this is going to be their new year, that they're going to become like what you read in 2 Corinthians 9, 7, giving thoughtfully, intentionally, with a purpose. So I, I'm just going to ask you, just would you just pray for both of those people right now? Yeah. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for for the ones that feel discouraged right now, that feel like they have been praying, they've been crying out, they've been asking, they don't know what else to do and they just feel like they're not being heard and they're, they're wondering and they're questioning. God, I ask in Jesus' name that you would just communicate the fact that they are on your radar, that you are not unaware of the situation at hand in their lives. Father, I pray that you would bring your incredible encouragement through many different vehicles to just say, 
just to let you know I hear you when you call. And Father, I also pray for those that that have this intention to give. And I ask that you would cause each one of us to be sensitive, to listen to you and to obey you quickly in all those things, recognizing the fact that as a, a good father, you like to participate and you allow us to participate in what your heart is to do for people. So I pray that you would help us to walk out in obedience those steps and those things and assignments that you give us to do that are intended to encourage your people and increase your kingdom for the glory of your name. Amen. 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 That's so good. Man, either way, I felt like we should have had like a B3 kind of going there at the end, right? We're having church, brother. <laughs> Woo! Eloy, I want you to, like a couple of weeks ago, man, you just dropped a bomb on me. I want you to talk a little bit about some of the, you, you've, you've done some battles and some war against fear, I feel like, especially in the last 12 months. And just talk a little bit about how that you weaponize joy. Yeah, it's uh, it's been quite the year, right, with with everything that's going on. But in my world, it's like the enemy, um, he just wanted to come at me in my thoughts. You know, uh, I'm getting older. I'm not, you know, uh, I'm not to the half point yet of being 50. I'm not there yet. But, you know, there's just different things. And it, it, it just starts with a, a little a seed, right? A little thought that he plants. And, you know, it, if you're not careful, those, those can get weeds in your thoughts and, and really start to torment you in areas. So, you know, I'm doing everything I can to be proactive and just really ask the Lord, like, show me the areas that I need to adjust or make tweaks in. So, um, you know, I, I began to do that. And, you know, it uh, it involves going to do some doctor visits, right, and get some things known. You know, God uses the doctors, so uh, amen for them and for their help. Because, but I know who my ultimate physician is. Mm -hmm. But God was directing me to go ahead and get these appointments underway and uh, and just so you know what you don't know, so to speak, medically speaking. And so in these procedures or in, in an appointment that I had, you know, it's in, it's in the hospital. You know, there's a lot going on. So it just becomes sometimes very, you know, un, you know, unknowing. You don't know what you don't. You don't know what's coming. It's, unner it's unnerving. You know, uh, it's intense, right? It's, it's, it's intense. intense, you know, and in the moment. The word joy is kind of the furthest thing away. It's not like a happy moment where we're going to do cartwheels and excitement and we want the balloons to come in. It's, uh, it's very, it's different. But it was in that moment that the word joy stuck in my head and in my heart. And like it says in Psalms 1611, you will show me the path of life in your presence mm -hmm. is fullness of joy mm -hmm. and your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. That's so good. And in that moment, I thought, man, I feel the furthest from joy. But it took that thought process to me to know what my belief system really was in. And I, I Pam wrote a song, mm -hmm. There is Joy. You know, in the presence of the Lord, there is joy. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. Mm -hmm. And I took that word and I just meditated it over and over and over. And I sung it in my heart, in my mind, my spirit. And I was like, Lord, no matter what I'm going through, no matter the results that may appear on paper or what, I just knew that just singing that wash, I literally felt those words washing over me, washing over me, driving out the fear, driving out the, the unknowns, driving out any doubts that I had for my, the plans for my life. I just kept rehearsing that. I, kept, I felt like it was... Um, that was my medicine at that moment. Mm -hmm. You know, they may have had an IV going in me, you know, keeping me hydrated, but the Lord had his joy washing over me, washing over me. And it really gave me strength to walk through that moment. And it just, it began to sit in like, you know, there are times that it doesn't seem like, you know, the rainbows and the, and the balloons are coming out. But that's a time where we armor up and we know that the, the word of the Lord, the joy is our strength and we can rest in that. You know, the facts that may appear on paper, on paper, they're interchangeable, but God's truth is solid and yeah. never changes. Yes. And that really uh, brought me through that time. Wow, brother. That's man. so good, man. Cue the B3 again. <laughs> <laughs> wow.
<laughs> getting a little gospel, getting a little Southern gospel here. That's awesome. Pam, um, these are so, this is so good. Uh, you know, I know in the last five years, it probably been five of the toughest years of our life, you know, our married life together. And um, we've gone through a lot of goodbyes. I, I want you to, <laughs> without crying, <laughs> I want you to talk a little bit uh, about just using joy to overpower and overcome grief and sorrow. Yeah, I, and I, I'm thinking of Isaiah 61, 3 right now. It says, uh, to grant a, a consolation, a comfort, and a joy to those who mourn in Zion. To give them an ornament or a garland of beauty instead of ashes. And the oil of joy instead of mourning. The garment of praise instead of heaviness and being burdened and falling apart. And, you know... Steph was, was talking about that. You were talking about that, Eloy. But there's times that almost the grief within two years, within a couple years, before that, there were some things that were just really challenging, some disappointment, some pain, some things that, that came and that were so heavy that I was trying to overcome already. And then within two years, my rock star, I call them mom and dad, amazing, talented ministers of God out there just full time. Suddenly, just like that, within two years, both went to heaven suddenly. And you could feel like, almost like, you know, when you have hot tea, hot water, and then you put the tea bag in, and that tea infuses into the hot water, and every part of the water is infused with, with the tea. Well, it felt like all of a sudden, my body was starting to be infused and take, take that grief and that sorrow. And I just stood up and I just commanded. I started speaking to my, in the middle of the night, my mind and my body. I, I said, mind and body, I command it. Will and emotions, I command you to reject the sorrow. We're going to grieve. It's okay to cry. Absolutely. Don't get me wrong. I cry, you go on. But there's a difference between a letting it infuse you, cripple you and become a spirit. Mm -hmm. And so as it infused me, I would just say, nope. I said, no, mind and body, I command you to reject the sorrow. The joy of the Lord come, mind and body, I command you to receive the peace, the love, and the joy of Jesus right now. And I could feel that. It's, it's a supernatural thing, and like it's not the balloons. It's, it's this solid strength that, that's it's grace, it's joy, it's, it's love, it's comfort, it's peace all at once. But it was like that determination of me just speaking to myself like King David yeah. and saying, no, 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 you're not going to, because I see too many people, there's a difference between grieving and sorrow. We all do that. Mm -hmm. But then I, I've also seen people get sick. Mm -hmm. They can't be even a blessing to their family. Some people even commit suicide because the grief infuses them. And I just feel like saying to you, some of you have been infused with grief. It's, you're going to sorrow, cry. It's okay. But you need to stand up right now. There's people that need you. God's got more for you in this life. And you have to speak to your mind and body right now and say, no more grief, no more sorrow. We don't sorrow like the world sorrows. The word says, the word mm -hmm. says that, right, Steph? Yeah. And you have a word. There's something you have right now it does. just to say to them, I feel. Yeah, I believe that difference. Um, we can choose, our bodies are not intended to carry grief. Right. We're not built for it. Our bodies are not suited for it. And really the, the word says that blessed are those who grieve mm -hmm. because they'll be comforted. Yes. So there's a blessing in the grief, but it has to be released out of us. You don't hold on to it. Grieving is the purpose to exchange. So you grieve so that you can receive comfort. So you don't stay living in the grief. You only grieve to receive. That's why we do it. Our bodies are not built to carry it. And it can destroy us from the inside out. It can suck away all life, starting with your spirit and oozing out, just like you said, into our physical body. And it is not honorable no. to God. Do, do we want to honor God? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's honorable to receive his comfort and it's honorable to receive his joy, right? Honey? Absolutely. That's so good. Both you guys, that's just 
it's so spot on that, you know, like joyless living, we need to realize joyless living is, is the result of living without good news. So, you know, when Jesus was teaching on the Beatitudes in Matthew 5, he, he said this, he said, blessed are they that mourn because they will be comforted. Mm. So in other words, there's no comfort if you're not filled. So, you know, you, when you mourn, there's a vacancy in your life. But in that moment of vacancy, it's meant to pull in the Holy Spirit, pull in the comfort, as you said, stuff of God, to pull in everything that God's supplying and joy. Yes. You know, I know it's hard to imagine, but the joy of the Lord is our strength, as you pointed to, Eloy. And I mean, in those times of mourning, in those times of sorrow, you must pull in the joy because if you don't, you can start building an identity around your brokenness and around your, your lack and around your, your all dress. Here I am all dressed in black and you're all dressed in black. You know, you can start building an identity around being the man or the woman all dressed in black. And that's not what God has for us. It were, it's meant to signal God. I got a need over here. You need to fill it. Yes. Because every time a lung expels air, it's already set up to breathe in new air, not water, air. You got to breathe in the air. So joyless living is living without the good news, but praise God, we go into this new year with good news. Yeah. We got good news. You know, like when you're good news focused, you are not only sourcing God's joy, but you are yourself a source of joy. You can read that in John 15 and 11. Jesus literally said, I've said these words to you so that my joy might be in you and that your joy, you notice when his joy is in us, we start to take possession of it and now it becomes my joy. Mm -hmm. So my joy can spill out over onto others. And that's a beautiful thing. Great joy is fulfilling in a person's life. It shows up. It affects your choices. It affects your words. People who have joy tend to rejoice. That means they speak the good over and over and over. Not the bad. They don't rehearse the bad. They rehearse the good over and over. This is what the Lord did. Just like Stephanie was doing. This is what the Lord, this is how the Lord used me. This is how the Lord directed me. Look at what the Lord has done. You see, you live full. You're not hungry all the time, but you're content. So things like um, temptations, lust, coveting, jealousy, envy, many other temptations, they're powerless against you because you live life full of God's joy, right? Nehemiah 8 verse 10 says this, and be not grieved and depressed. Like Pam said, it doesn't mean you don't cry. It doesn't mean you don't have this moment when you say goodbye to somebody where you feel the grief. That's not what it's saying. It's saying, don't be grieved in that you live there. You set up camp and this is my new residence. Do not be grieved and depressed for the joy of the Lord is your strength and your stronghold. Good news. Jesus' instructions and his words, they are ingredients for joy. So right now, I want to just pop out of this and we're going to go to one of Pam's bakes because there's nothing like realizing it takes ingredients, the good news ingredients to make for joy. So let's go to Pam's bake right now. That's right, it's the good news of Jesus Christ. It's so wonderful to bring good news. You know, yes. you think of even when, when Christmas time and, and God said, I bring you good news, the angel said, good yes. news. So yes. I've got Chandler with me, my friend, yay. So today we are making our holiday sugar cookie truffles. Mm -hmm. This is a newer recipe for me. So we're gonna be experimenting a little bit today. I'm so glad that I can be a part of this. So first, here's what we're gonna start with. So we are gonna have some vanilla with us. Um, we're gonna need a little bit of cream cheese. We'll also need um, some sprinkles for some fun little garnish. Um, we're gonna use white chocolate and crumpled up sugar cookies. So your sugar cookies should be pretty easy. You can use them pre-made, you can make them yourself. If you got a family recipe, Yes, just throw them crumple, in a bag, crumple, crumple you, them up. If you've got kids, they can have a fun time crumpling them. Yes, yeah. yes. So you're just gonna, yes, your kids will love crumpling them up. Actually, the way you're supposed to do it is take a spoon and like hit the bag, but we'll do it a little more sophisticated this time. So what you're gonna start with is after you crumple up those cookies, you're gonna throw them into a bowl. So you're gonna need about 15 sugar cookies, put them in that bowl, and they're gonna be nice and crumbly in here. Your next step is going to be grabbing this cream cheese, just a good old block, good eight ounces or so. Just throw it in. 
Next, you're gonna use a little bit of power. You're gonna have to crunch it up and stir it all in you with You won't have those. to work out that day, right? Yes, no, this is <laughs> shoulder day. My That's arms it. actually get tired from doing this. And then while you're stirring that up, you're gonna add in this vanilla. Vanilla does make a dream work here. Adds a good flavor to it. Again, you're just gonna make that a good consistency. You don't want it too runny because then it makes it very hard. You're gonna form these into balls in just a little bit, just the little truffles. So you don't want it to be too runny. You want them to stick, okay? So while that is setting for a little bit, um, you can even put it in the freezer for a second if you want to let it get a little bit harder. If you did overmix, no problem. Um, and then what you're gonna do with your white chocolate is you're gonna put it into the microwave, okay? You're gonna make it real melty, get it nice and runny. Um, what you're gonna do then is after that has come, has come out of the freezer, you're gonna ball them up into little truffles again. And then from there, you're gonna dip them into the white chocolate. Make sure they're nice and covered, nice and yummy looking. And then after you dip them, you're gonna take this red garnish or green or whatever holiday colors you like, um, and you're just gonna sprinkle them right on top of them. Some people I've seen roll the whole truffle in, so you could do that as well. But this is gonna be your finished product, and I've already had two from this batch, so sorry I didn't tell you. <laughs> I, I, I snuck a taste too. I mean, they are pretty great. <laughs> you know, this is awesome because it, it's just so easy and it yeah. looks so beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I know that you love to tell the good news of Jesus to people. Yeah. That's all what you're about. And um, Chandler, what do you have? There's a lot of people watching from around the world. Yeah. What kind of prayer or declaration do you want to say over them right now? Well, I mean, Pastor Stephen talked about it so well. I mean, the good news of Jesus. And I think that this holiday season, my prayer for you is that you understand the good news is Jesus understands. We serve a God that understands. He literally took every step of life that we take and he understands and i just pray that that would be something that resonates with you this season that no matter where you're at in life jesus he does understand we serve a god who's very near to what we go through so mm. that's good tan thank you so much that was so good miss pamela i don't know <laughs> how you do that and you get changed Rush. so quick and you're good man you're good you know look the ingredients to living filled strengthened, directed. I want to give you seven Christmas gifts that God has already provided for all of us right now that you can open them now. Like how about that Christmas gifts going into the new year that you can celebrate, enjoy right now. They're God's gifts. And let's just do this, you guys. Let's go around the table. We've kind of gone over this and we'll just kind of share them one by one. So seven Christmas gifts that God has for you right now that you can take advantage of. Number one is good news, right? The angel announced it for all of humanity. It wasn't just for the shepherds. It's for every person. And that good news always, always, always overpowers the bad news. What would number two be, Pam? Number two is great joy. <laughs> God anointed his son Jesus to bring the ingredients of great joy. So you got good news of great, great joy. joy. What a gift. Stephanie. Peace on earth. Ooh, when we glorify God in heaven, we experience peace on earth earth. You know, the whole world's looking for peace right now. It is. The whole yeah. world's trying to figure out peace. Every neighborhood, every community, every city, every town, every country is trying to get, uh, trying to hedge their bets on how do we get some peace going on here? Because things are a mess. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Yes. And without the Prince of Peace, honey, you ain't got no peace. Right. So number one, the gift from God is good news. Number two, great joy. And number three, peace on earth. Eloy, what do you got, my brother? God's good will. Love it. As Jesus came to authorize God's good will and plans for us. Look, you know what? God has amazing plans for each one of us. But Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. And we're fooling ourselves. We're kidding ourselves if we think we can fulfill our God-given design without the author Good, right? giving us that will and that plan. Yeah. Yeah. Like that, that's a gift from God right now. You see, the thing is, you don't have to deserve God's good will. Jesus paid the price so that we get what he deserves. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, with boldness, I can walk into my father's presence and say, Father, I want what Jesus paid for me. And one of those things he paid for me is your good plan for my life, your good will for my life. So we're going into a new year. We get to have God's good will for our life, but we got to step into it. 
Like, I mean, this, it isn't automatic. We got to authorize it. Say, yes, Lord, I receive the ingredients. I receive this gift. So good news, great joy, peace on earth. Number four, God's goodwill. And number five, as Eloy was talking about, fearless living. Doesn't matter what the circumstances are. It doesn't mean that just all the circumstances are rosy, but we can have fearless living because that angel's word from heaven is carrying, hey, peace on earth. And the angel said, fear not. Fear not. Don't be afraid, guys. So that's for us. You can have fearless living. The first words out of God's messenger, the angel, was fear not. And so then, Pam, what would number six be? God's love. Mm. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He empowers us to give. And without the ability to give, we truly can't give because it's uh, more blessed to give. So that's what Jesus yeah. said, right? More God's blessed love. to give than receive. So God's love is his gift for you right now. You can open it right now. And I want to land on this one, Stephanie. Number seven, what's a gift that God has for everybody right now? Suddenly miracles. Oh, yeah. It's a good one. It's one that we actively <laughs> yeah. live for, right, babe? Right. Yeah. Yeah. The Christmas message is the great expectation of suddenly miracles. The shepherd said, let's go see this thing that's come to pass. Oh, I love it. When good news is the focus, people start seeing miracles from God. It's true. Right? It's yeah. true. When we turn our attention on him, people start seeing that. The great miracle, which is Jesus' birth, empowers every other miracle. And we've got a list that we're believing yes. for. Yes, <laughs> and His birth empowers every other miracle. All things are possible. Amen. Amen. Nothing's impossible with God. It's true. Come, come on, listen. Just right where you're at right now. Just I don't care if you're in a living room, if you're in a garage, if you're in a church building. Right where you're at. Just say this out loud. Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing, Nothing is, impossible. is impossible with God. And then say this, say, all things are possible with God. All, all things, things are, are possible, possible with God. God. That's your new year. When you open up those gifts, when you take those gifts from heaven, you activate God's goodness in your life. My friend, if you haven't received Jesus as your personal Savior, do not attempt to take another year on of life without Jesus and without his joy. We all need the source of life, and that source is Jesus. The wise men, guess what they did? They followed the start of Jesus. The shepherds, guess what they did? They followed the instructions to Jesus. The rich, the poor, the young, the old were all in need of following the instructions, the word of God, to the great joy, which is Jesus, the answer to life. You and me too, all of us, Eloy, Stephanie, Pam, me, we all need Jesus. So pray this prayer with me and let Jesus begin to fill your life right now. Dear Lord Jesus, you came to earth as a child, born of the Blessed Virgin Mary, so that I could be adopted into God's family. You lived a life without sin, died on the cross for me in my place. You rose up from the grave, forgiven me of all my sins. Come into my heart. Be the guiding light of my life. Show me the way to honor you. Fill me with your joy now, all in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen. That's so good. You've just prayed a life-changing prayer that can affect not just your next year, but your eternity. You know, when you put off this mortality, you know where you're going, who you're going to be with. God is the king of your life. Jesus is the Lord of your life. And you have an eternity in heaven with God. Isn't that beautiful? Praise God. You're in the family of God now and with all family benefits. So you just added the most necessary ingredient. As Pam's talking about ingredients doing her bake, you just added the most necessary ingredient for all of eternity for living life with joy, a personal relationship with Jesus. So do this for us. Please go to the Jesus button on our website. You can get some more directions, some help, some healthy ingredients for living with joy in your life. You have to be persistent, right? You got to be persistent and consistent to go after God, all that God has for you. Never, ever, ever give up.